Jonathan, I've been very focused on seeing the scope of consciousness theory, the landscape, so to speak. Um, when I've studied your theories, it was definitely idiosyncratic in terms of, and I say that in the most positive <laughs> smile way, because I love that. A lot of theories are very much the same. Yours is not. You have very specific points which are different than other theories. Doesn't make it right, doesn't make it wrong, but to me, it makes it exciting. So tell me how it works. Well, so I start from uh, the sort of big picture perspective. And that's just the way that I think about things. Um, and trying to sort of think about how does consciousness relate to physical reality and what is the nature of our experience of uh, consciousness. And, and starting from that uh, perspective, I think does sort of encourage you to think about things in a somewhat unique way. So for example, one of the models that we've been uh, focusing on is something we call nested observer windows or nows. And the metaphor that we use for the nested observer window model is a mosaic pho photograph. So with a mosaic photograph, you've got um, every pixel of the photograph is itself a photograph. And you can imagine every pixel of that is a photograph and every pixel of that photograph. So it's a fractal up and, and, and possibly down. And so that model uh, provides a way to think about how a consciousness may exist at sort of the apex in which we experience it, but that we may be privy to all these lower level streams of consciousness, which may be privy to lower level streams of consciousness. So that provides a way of thinking about how very low levels of consciousness may integrate into higher mm. and higher levels. Yeah, and uh, what are some of the other aspects of uh, your theory? Well, so another aspect of this model, which also relates to a related theory of a resonance theory, is that the way that the different windows interact with each other is through resonance, that all the different windows are resonating and the quality of their rhythms is the way in which they communicate with each other. And we have three different principles of resonance. There's synchronization where everything is at a, vibrating at exactly the same rate. When you say everything, you mean every pixel. Every pixel, that's and right. And every pixel is its own little uh, entity. That's right. But they're all vibrating collectively relative to the higher level, and that produces an experience of a singular uh, window of experience. And then you have multiple windows that are resonating uh, what we call coherence, sort of like a conversation, a back and forth. And that's what allows a different windows to communicate at the same level. And then cross-frequency coupling, where you have lower levels rhythm faster than the higher level ones. And this allows for the up and down communication. So with these three different kinds of resonance, we're able to get, uh, construct a model that allows the, all these different windows to communicate with each other. And what creates the binding effect that all this is one image? Synchronization, ha everything happening at exactly the same time. So through synchronization at, at any particular level, that produces the binding for that level, but then you can have synchronization at lower level windows, which may produce the binding for that lower level window and enable that lower level window to have its own independent stream of consciousness. It's a little bit like the inside out uh, recent uh, movie, or I guess now there's two, two iterations of it, where you have these, all the different emotions are having their own experience inside the person's <laughs> head. Uh, this model allows for that possibility that we may actually have multiple streams of consciousness going on inside us. And uh, other, uh, other aspects to your theory, the nature of time? Well, so all of these uh, models uh, are connected to uh, a, a more foundational perspective which has to do with the way in which consciousness relates to the physical universe. And here I draw on sort of four basic axioms of uh, experience. These are qualities of experience that I think are self-evident. I say four, but actually the fourth one I'm a little bit more iffy on, but I'll, I'll run through them quickly. So the first one, I think we can all agree, is that experience happens. We could be a brain in a vat, we could be in a simulation, but experience is happening. The second one is that the quality of experience is dynamic. We are always moving from one moment to the next to the next. It's very much like a, a flip book where we're always experiencing the jump between one page and the next page and the next page. The third is that it's always now. We may imagine the future, mm. recall the past, 
but we're always doing it in the now. And the last one, which is a little bit more uh, controversial, but it sure feels that way, is that we have some agency. When, we, when I want to move my hand up, it goes up. And so these four things are intrinsic to the way that I think about consciousness and to the model of time that I've been thinking about. And how would this total theory of everything you've said, which is very original, um, how did that relate to the sort of the foundational metaphysics? Is it a, can you instantiate all of this in a purely physicalistic sense? That's the, that's right. the critical question. Well, I think that um, in order to really integrate these four foundational elements into our models of consciousness and reality, we actually have to extend the way that we think about consciousness and introduce a subjective dimension to our models. So in, in the way that I've been thinking about it, there is not just objective time in a block universe in a purely materialistic way as is normally construed, but there's also a intrinsically subjective dimension. And these windows, these nested observer windows, are moving through objective time relative to subjective time. And this actually is quite interesting because it allows for us to move through the block universe, which is something that's not possible in the, the standard model. In the standard model, the past, the present, and the future are all fixed. Mm. So there's actually no way to move through them.